All right, back for another beer review. And today I'll be reviewing yet another beer from the Half Acre Beer Company. And they're out of Chicago, Illinois. And this is their Galaxy Double Daisy Cutter. So they're calling this one a double pal ale. Comes in at 8% alcohol by volume. No IBUs list in time of review. This can is just over five weeks old. I want to give a huge thanks and shout out once again to a very good friend of mine and a viewer of the channel, Kenny, for hooking me up with this one. So big thanks to him. In the description box, I'll post a link to the Beer Mail unboxing video I did that contains all the goodies he hooked me up with. And uh, he sent me regular Daisy Cutter because that is a beer I never had before. You might not believe it, but I never did. And I was really happy to be able to try and review that one. So this is basically, they do a double Daisy Cutter, which is just an imperialized version of uh, Daisy Cutter. And this is the uh, Galaxy version. They're actually brewing this one with um, Galaxy and Citra hops, but I think there's more Galaxy than Citra, hence the name. And that's all I know about it. Just over five weeks old, pretty damn fresh. And I'm expecting something that didn't look like regular Daisy Cutter. Daisy Cutter was like an old school American Pale Ale, you know, kind of clear. Uh, you know, piney, citrus, grapefruit, things of that nature. So I'm thinking this one's going to be a little bit more explosive when it comes to the fruit quality. And yeah, so this looks more like a hazy than it does a, uh, you know, like an old school West Coast pal ale or something. Um, yeah, so we'll throw this over here. Well, we'll go like this. Does it really matter? Not really. Not really. So yeah, that looks like a hazy, honestly. A uh, really deep orange color. Very murkid and turbid. Murkid? Very murky. I like to say murkid, though. Turbid, murky, murky. Um, at the bottom here, there's like a light kind of like uh, orange color, but pretty much orange throughout, like a deep orange. The head looks super creamy, almost like a nitro head. Uh, about a finger of like a off-white creamy, super creamy nitro-esque head. Looks beautiful. Let's get a nose. There's some alcohol legs there at 8%. All right, let's get a nose. Oh, what is that? Wow. This smells completely different, obviously, than Daisy Cutter. But, whoo. That is huge, ranky, dank, like close to rotting fruit. I know that sounds terrible, but like it has, I've said it many times, overripened, like overripened melon or like a pineapple or something close to where you're about to throw it out and you're like, yeah, I think I can eat that and it's safe and I'll be fine. It just won't be as good as if it was ripened or underripened. Um, but it also has this real like big herbaceous, like garlic onion thing. It's a little bit of like an underlying bready, sweeter malt, almost caramel-esque. Yeah, there's honeydew melon, there's cantaloupe, there's pineapple. There's a lot of sweeter, overripened, close to being trashed fruit. Uh, and when I say that in beers, I don't mean it in a negative. It just has that like real ranky dang kind of vibe. It's such a different character when I get into beer because more often than not, it's you know overripened fruit, candied fruit, juicy fruit, the whole nine. When it comes to something like this, it's so different and unique that I'm like, all right, I actually enjoy it. And I do. But this smells, that was a huge earthiness. Smells completely different than regular Daisy Cutter, and I figured it would, but this is a little bit more different than I thought. Anyway, let's get into it. Cheers, everybody. Thanks again, Kenny. That is nice. That's real nice. So different. It's so different. It really is. Body mess was like higher side to medium, lower side to full. This is big and thick, viscous for something that's 8%. One of the bigger 8% double parallels, double IPs, wherever you want to say that I've had recently. Real big viscosity to the body. Mouthfeel, super soft and smooth, real creamy. This has like a hot butcher ass kind of mouthfeel to it, honestly. And it's thicker than the vast majority of like their 7.5% double IPs or even 8% double IPs have had from hot butcher. It's really nice. Yeah, real nice. Um, the taste, it's really cool. Uh, it's very unique. It's hard to explain because I haven't had a beer like this, honestly, in a long while. Right at the forefront, bready, caramel, sweeter malt notes, almost a honey-esque kind of malt note. Slides underneath the palate. Omnipresent, always there. Never the predominant note, but always carrying those hops. And the hops... It's funny because in the nose, uh, it was over ripened, crazy, like, you know, trashing fruit kind of thing. In the taste, not really. It's more of a sweet, like, honeydew, cantaloupe, papaya, fleshy, sweeter fruit. And that's pretty much the main note I'm getting. Yeah, halfway through the palate, it's a real big herbaceous dankness. Real dank. Lots of herbal tones. Basil, thyme. Garlic, onion. Think... 
think those kind of um, herbs and and just uh, vegetables kind of just, it's like gripping the back of my palate. It's kind of crazy. Finish the semi-dry with a mild bitterness. This is sweet, but on the back of the palate, it balances it out uh, quite a bit with that semi-dry finish. It is just fucking crazy unique to my palate. And I'm kind of left with, and it's funny, I've said this before in, hang on, I was going to say something, but my brain kind of just kind of went sideways on me. Uh, this kind of has like that, the, the beer is old type of vibes with, I mentioned before, orange marmalade, like on uh, toasted white bread or just white bread. I'm getting that a little bit, but not strictly orange marmalade. This is kind of like a, I don't know if it exists, but like a melon marmalade or maybe maybe like some kind of stone fruit jam, like a peach or an apricot or a mango jam on top of like white bread. It has that kind of uniqueness to it, especially on the finish. Hides the alcohol extremely well. I would, there's maybe a little bit of a warming in the chest, nothing on the palate. Um, the only reason I know this is a bigger beer, the body and mouthfeel, especially the body. It's it's like lower side of full. It's pretty fucking crazy. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pour the rest in here. I'm... This is, this is to me, so it's hard to compare this to, you know, Daisy Cutter, which, you know, is just an American Pale Ale. That beer, I then gave a four, and I think that's appropriate score for what that beer is supposed to be. This beer is way different, but also better to my palate. Yeah, it's real cool. So, rating on the Galaxy Double Daisy Cutter from Half Acre. I'm going to go low 4.25 out of 5. I'm going to go 4.15 out of 5. I really like this. Really good. Definitely better than the Daisy, uh, regular Daisy Cutter, but also completely different. Bigger ABV. Double version of that. They're using Galaxy. Now, they're using Galaxy and Citra, but more Galaxy. Definitely getting the Galaxy influence, but such a cool beer. Um, price point availability. I believe these were $18 a four-pack. Kenny maybe paid a little bit more unless he got them from the brewery, but I think they were $18 a four-pack at the brewery. Um, and price point... Uh, is really awesome, but availability, I think Half Acre gets in and around the Chicago area and into some other states, certainly not here in West New York. So uh, if you get distro of Half Acre stuff and you see this beer, give it a go. Let me know what you think about it. Just over five months old, drinking pretty pretty damn well, I'd say. I would love to see how this one was like five days old, but um, it's such a unique beer. And even as I'm sitting here, there is this like resinous kind of dank or baseous kind of tone. It, so this does not have a clean finish. There's a lot of like lingering, like, bitterness but it's not astringent it's, it's nice i want to go back for a taste to kind of get rid of it like mm. ooh, and then all that nice fruity fleshy kind of sweeter goodness you know jammy uh peach and mango on on white bread yeah really good so thanks to kenny for this one thanks to everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the beer patrol if you've had this one before let me know what you think about it do they do any other variants kenny or anybody else out there be cool that if they did like a citra one obviously they have citra but like citra heavy or like i'd love to see a sabro version of this or sabro or however you want to say it uh that's one of my favorite hops at this point i'd love to see like a coconut version of this but anyway gonna shut it down till the next one cheers